Hey there, Alana here. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We're really glad you joined us. We're doing a coffee break episode today where we take your questions. And if you've got questions about prayer, send them to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. Not because we're experts and have all the answers, but because Jamie and I love to hear what's on your heart. And these are such fun springboards for really interesting discussions. So before we jump into today's coffee break, let's open with a word of prayer. God, we just come before you thankful for this time to be together and to talk about prayer and just to talk through some questions that we know our listeners are thinking about. And we just pray today, Lord, that you would give us the words that you would help us to really see into Lisa's question that she gave us today. Um, We thank you for her and we just thank you that, um, that you see each one of us, you know, our prayers and our questions, whether we bring them to you or not. And we just ask that you would meet us where we are today and be glorified in our discussion. Amen. Amen. So Lisa's question today says, how do we keep from sounding repetitive when we pray? So Lisa, thank you so much for bringing this up because I think this is a question that a lot of us have. We're told on the one hand to be persistent and not give up when we pray. But we're also told, like, don't babble because God knows what you need. (laughs) So let's dive in. So how do we keep from sounding repetitive? The the thing I love about you praying and then me reading the question is that means that you get to answer first. And it gives me time to think about it. (laughs) So, Jamie, how do we keep from sounding repetitive when we pray? Well, funny you should ask. (laughs) Imagine that. (laughs) Ask me again to be repetitive, you know, like. Yeah, right. (laughs) No, I, I think that, um, when I heard this question, I'm not a hundred percent sure what Lisa was thinking, but the two things that came to my mind were first repetitive. Like I get worried sometimes because I, there are certain phrases that I like to say, and I even think about this, like when I'm beginning our podcast and I pray, thank Mm -hmm. you and be glorified and right. Kind of the, I the almost, go-to phrases. Right. Yeah. And I, I just wonder if that comes across as disingenuous. I mean, I'm sincere every time, but in opening so. up the show or in praying for people, but there are some go-to phrases that I have that mm-hmm. I think, do I, is that the kind of repetitive she means? Or does it mean keeping from sounding repetitive, like repeating the same prayers over again to God? Right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not I would sure. guess. I know at least when I struggle with this question of being repetitive, it's more about the second. Like, am I supposed to just pray once and expect that God's heard me? Right. You know, and He's going to take care of it, or mm-hmm. do I keep praying till I get what I want? Or yeah, so let's let's cover both. So let's cover mm-hmm. that one first. So you know, we've got this neat example. I really actually like love the story of the persistent widow mm-hmm. that Jesus tells us, and the specific purpose behind the story is to show us that we should pray and not give up. Like that's stated right there in scripture. It's not Jesus told this story. It was Jesus told this story to tell us that we should pray and not give up. Like, Don't you I love pray. that? It's so convenient. I love that because then there's no <laughs> he doubt. spells it out. Okay, so we are meant to pray and not give up. So this widow, she keeps knocking on this guy's house, this judge saying, give me relief from my enemy. Give and finally, like he just gets so sick of her. It's really a case of the squeaky wheel or the, what am I trying to say? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, or there's a similar parable about the guy who shows up at his neighbor's house, like in the middle of the night and says, give me bread, give me bread, give me bread. He doesn't get up because he feels like genuinely wanting to help. He just, he's annoyed. And so he gives this guy what he wants. I don't think that we're meant to take that to mean that God gets annoyed when we are persistent. And I definitely don't think that God ever just throws up his hands like, Jamie is going to keep asking me this until I just give it to her. Like as a parent, I do that. <laughs> like one time it, my my husband came home and he's like, why is so-and-so doing this? And it was probably like extra computer time or something. I don't even remember, but it was because I knew if I didn't say yes, he would just keep asking and asking. Oh, it was it was French toast. He, how, how good does this sound? He got a recipe at a homeschool co-op class to make Nutella stuffed French toast. Oh, and it's amazing. But as soon as he really got good. the, he, he kept telling us, this is so good. I want to make it. This is, and finally I'm like, okay, just make the silly French toast because you're going to keep asking. As parents, I think we do that. I know God doesn't do that. So, but we're also told very specifically to persevere in prayer. Mm-hmm. And so I think in my mind, I think the difference between just like, 
putting your foot down and saying, God, I'm just going to keep on praying for this until you give me what I want and being persistent in prayer. I think of the kind of difference between those two is one of them's putting their faith in God and his provision and the other's putting their faith in me being persistent. You know, so in the first case, it's I'm going to just keep asking until I get what I want. And my faith is kind of being put in my own persistence. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think we can pray with perseverance and continue to pray the same thing. Like I've got someone I've been praying for their salvation for like over a decade. I don't think God's tired of my prayers, but I am trusting in God's provision, trusting in God's timing. Um, and sometimes I think too, that we should be a little bit malleable and instructable so that maybe, I, I don't think that praying for someone's salvation would fall under this camp, but let's say that you're praying for um, a ministry opportunity and you really, really want this thing to happen and you're so excited about it happening and you're praying a lot that it will happen. I think that sometimes you need to be open to God changing and morphing your prayers mm -hmm. so that sometimes, sometimes I have felt like God has really put on my heart, keep praying for this until it happens, you know, and even when it feels like an uphill battle, but other times it's kind of, okay, I've been praying for this for weeks and all of a sudden I just sort of get this sense that, okay, this isn't quite what I meant to be praying for now. And then you trust God to kind of direct your prayers a little better. Um, you know, like it says, we don't know how to pray, but the spirit helps us. I see this is, a, is an example of that. So sometimes I think that we can be just totally persistent, kind of like with someone's salvation. I don't, I don't really ever see that being a wrong prayer to pray no matter what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas, you know, maybe praying for, um, I don't know, praying for that. Okay, I'll give you a silly example. So last year, um, I just got back from Las Vegas at a writer's retreat, and I went to the same writer's retreat last year. And I may have even mentioned this on the show, like they had a giveaway drawing for a writing retreat week, all expenses paid to Aruba. And I was like, yes, please. And I, I literally was praying for that because I'm like, let's do it. And I'd even told Jamie, I'm like, Jamie, if I get this, you're coming with me because you know, Scott <laughs> doesn't want to go. He's like, why would I do in Aruba? So you're, you're going to be my, my buddy this whole time. I, I did. I prayed for this, you know, and I, I prayed hard for it, but I also kept my hands totally open being like, God, if you, you know, it wasn't like they named the winner and I was like, well, that's it. God, I'm throwing in the towel and never praying again. Right. And so sometimes I feel like it's, it's totally fine to pray for something and realize that, yeah, that doesn't mean God's obligated to give it to you. Yeah, no, I definitely think so. And, you know, even in those things that are repetitive that you're praying for over and over again, like take praying for someone's salvation. I think of our 30 days of prayer for the for the unsaved mm -hmm. where you have a like all different facets of yes things. and that's and a so, lot more helpful yeah than just so you, please help so and so be saved right so what you could do is take that prayer and go to god and say you know like i'm um, let's imagine that maybe lisa is concerned that she's taking the same prayer request to her prayer meeting every week if that mm -hmm. is what she's saying here to say god what is uh, an aspect of this prayer, a different angle of this prayer that you want to put on my heart or God lead me to a scripture pertaining to this prayer so that mm -hmm. I can put scripture over this person. And then that way you could kind of not only not be repetitive in your own mind or not be concerned about being repetitive, but I think it could expand your prayer and just really for allow sure. you to thoroughly flesh out and, and tap into God's heart for mm -hmm. that person or that issue or that situation in a yeah. way. That Didn't we do an episode once where it was like getting yourself out of a prayer rut or something? Mm -hmm. Does that ring any bells? You know, yeah. kind of like, I feel like I've been doing the exact same kind of prayers. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes that's nice because I think having structure is useful. Sometimes praying formulaically is okay. Like in my mind, the Lord's prayer is a formula for prayer and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's a template that we can follow. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. I think that's fine and good, but I also feel like sometimes it is nice to change things up. And so maybe let's take praying for someone who's unsaved. Maybe instead of just remembering them in your prayers and saying, God, please help this person be saved. Maybe you change it up by calling a friend and saying, Hey, will you pray with me for this person? Or maybe you write out a letter to God or 
do something that just engages maybe a different part of your brain. So you go on a prayer walk or I read this really interesting. This is totally an aside, but I guess like, um, you know, walking helps with depression, but even mm -hmm. taking a slightly different route when you walk, it gives you like this tiny dopamine hit because it's something new. Isn't so like that funny. Yeah. Like seriously, like me pacing counterclockwise instead of clockwise can like make me happier. Like, I think that's so cool how God just made us, you know, sometimes it's nice to change things up. Like we've even got the neuroscience to prove that. So I don't know what would, what are some things that you do if you feel like you're in one of these prayer ruts and just kind of saying the same things over and over? Well, so I was thinking that I, reading the Bible more, um, yeah. mm -hmm. gives, always gives me no, new fuel so that, and it For gives sure. me new, new perspectives <clears throat> and mm -hmm. new takes on things. And it always makes my prayers more creative and exciting. I think so. Yeah. I've got the kind of artistic counterpoint to that where, you know, like I know that even like watching movies or Netflix binging or reading books, like those help me with my novels because they're giving me ideas. And I mm -hmm. think that, yeah, in the spiritual realm, yeah, reading your Bible, or sometimes you can feel motivated by praying with the group. So even mm -hmm. if you don't have a regular prayer group, like you meet every Tuesday night or something, maybe just setting up something or calling a friend. I mean, like, hey, can we just spend some time praying? Which reminds me, Jamie, we haven't done that in a long time. Mm -hmm. I think we've both been like crazy busy since school started. But, um, you yeah. know, I know that that we don't need to pray for two hours every single day. But I feel like those times where we do set aside like a big chunk of time to pray together, I feel like that changes things up and, and fuels my personal prayer life for quite a while. Yeah, I agree with that. And, um, you know, just doing creative things mm -hmm. in your prayers, like writing God a letter about yeah. whatever it is. Or, or doodling your prayers. That's always a fun one. Oh, yeah. And then, well, and an acrostic, like, um, what did I? Oh, I just learned. Or like the praying through the A to Z. Is that kind of what you mean? Oh, that was cool. Gratitude from A to Z. No, yeah. I. I learned recently, I never had heard this before, that Psalm thir or Proverbs 31 is an acrostic. It's a right, right. Hebrew acrostic. Like I love the that. Letter. Yeah. So it goes through the letters of the Hebrew alphabet and mm -hmm. the attributes or whatever the lines of the poem mm -hmm. from those letters. So, or you could, you know, let's say, um, I just heard this recently from a blog post. This one woman wears bracelets for each of her kids mm -hmm. name around her wrist mm -hmm. every day and she will pray like an acrostic prayer using the first oh, the, the letters of their name so like for ben or, but how sad for the kid like ben who only has three letters versus Benjamin. like your name ah uh, that works <laughs> well i've told you about my grandma and she organized like she had like i've got dozens of cousins i don't think anybody really knows the exact count <laughs> You know, like I've got, yeah, it's, it's a really, really, really big family. And she prayed for us all and she kept it organized alphabetically. Right. And I always felt so smug and happy because since I'm Alana, she prayed for me first every single time. That is too funny. And poor Zed. Like, oh, no kidding. She fell asleep <laughs> long before he I'm prayed. Sure she she prayed. did. <laughs> yeah. No, I think all of those things help. But then like, let's say you've been doing that for a year and then you, like I said, you just kind of get in this rut. So then maybe mm -hmm. you start with Z, and poor Alana has to be the last one you pray for. Or, you know, even <laughs> something silly, like um, what we used to do is we would write prayers, like people we wanted to pray for. We put them on popsicle sticks and every day at dinner, we would just each pull out one popsicle stick and pray for it, you know? So like, it's just, it's a little bit of a tactile thing. It's a little bit of a prayer prompt and it's not it doesn't take tons of energy to set up, but you know, you're just, you're praying for something different. I think that, you know, kind of like changing up your route when you're on a walk. Sometimes mm -hmm. those things are just nice to, or, you know, when you go to the gym, like some people just get in this rut where they're doing, you know, their exercises in the exact same order. And sometimes even just mixing up the order a little bit is enough to get new, new fuel. Yeah. What about the kind of repetitive prayer where like you're saying the same things over and over and over, like in one prayer time? Right. So the thing that I was thinking about before is like, maybe you find that you're saying the words, Father God, 
da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And Father mm-hmm. God, do this. And Father God, do this. Now, I I do stuff like this where I will be like, well, did I say the word just a whole lot, or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did I say Father God or Lord Jesus, or whatever it is? And yeah. um, if it bothers you and you've noticed it become mindful of that and maybe just kind of identify those areas and try to break out of that mold a little bit more. But I think the danger there is that not only are you analyzing your prayers, I don't, you don't want your prayers to be a distraction. That's kind of my thing is I don't want someone to be distracted, but at the same time, like no matter what you're saying, if you're, if your prayer is sincere and it's coming from your heart, Mm -hmm. Who cares? You know, that's kind of my thought. Yeah, like it's, yeah. I know some people can kind of poke fun, like, and and it was sort of a funny joke, but there was this meme going around and it was like, if you talk to your spouse, like people pray at a prayer meeting (laughs) and it's like, dear sweet Emily, I just, I want you to know, Emily, that just, you're so great, Emily, and just, (laughs) could you take out the trash when you go to work? (laughs) You know, like, yes, that's funny, but also like, who cares what word, like, it's, it's not the words that you say that give prayer its power. You right. know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I feel like, okay, let's not poke fun at people. Maybe this is just how they learn to pray or how they're comfortable praying. And then I also don't think it's necessarily like if you're, I don't think you should self-censor your prayers all that much. You know, like um, that Vegas retreat or conference that I was just at, I was talking to someone and the conference is neat because the focus is all on marketing. Like there's nothing about the craft of writing. And I actually really like that because if I study the craft of writing, then I get hung up Mm -hmm. because someone's giving me rules that say, if you want to be a good writer, you've got to do this, 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 and this. And I'm trying to like keep those things in my head. And I've got whoever wrote that book or gave that advice, like standing behind my shoulders, metaphorically staring at me being like, why did you use that word? As opposed to well, and, and the cat part of your motivational style is like, well, then I'm just going to do the opposite. Yes. <laughs> or no, is that the salmon? Sorry, that might be the salmon. I'm not sure. For those of you that have It, it would be her, either. It would actually be either. Yeah. Either one. Um, so yeah, yeah, sorry. I got We're off. We're talking about the episode on motivational styles with the different animals. But yeah. yeah. So um, I would say in that case, I don't think it really cares. Like our our youngest son, he he sometimes gets like when he's talking to one of his parents, he gets like a higher pitched voice. Like he, he sometimes will like, I don't know if it's deliberate or not, but kind of use like the cutesy voice, you know, like he's still sort of the baby of the family and his brothers tease him about it. And like, this, it doesn't matter guys. Like he's just, he's talking to me anyway. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I sort of feel like it's like that when like, especially if you, if you feel yourself getting judgy about how other people pray out loud now, I get it. Sometimes it can be distracting if you're trying to be like really flowery or the kind of person who's like imposing a sermon into an, you know, into your prayer. Yeah, I totally get that's not necessarily fun for everybody else to listen to. But I think in as much as we can, we just like that's between them and God and doesn't really impact you at all. So don't worry too much about it. That's my take on it. No, I think so too. And yeah, I, I think pretty much it all boils down to when you're focused on just expressing to God mm-hmm. the prayers of your heart, then yeah, not a big deal. And I think maybe those placeholders and those repetitive phrases yeah. come in when we're self-conscious about our prayers. They can. Yeah. Or and they just be- feed into more self-consciousness. Like even when right. you record, I know, like I say, you know, a lot. Like that's, it's kind of my equivalent of, um, <laughs> like, uh, you yeah. know, I, mine is, um, oh, well, you know, like if I, if I, yeah. If I went into every recording being like, I can't say, you know, I can't say, you know, like, you know, then you're just, you're not free to just sit and talk, you yeah. know? And like what you and I do is we just sit and talk. And I remember like at the very beginning, you were trying to edit out like all the pauses, all of the, <laughs> you know, those itty bitty nitpickies and like, who the cares? Ums. We're just talking. Yeah. yeah. And I, so. yeah, I bet going back, listening to all those ones where I spent like hours per episode, removing all the little ums and Nobody likes, like, like nobody cares. It, it might yeah. even sound less genuine and real. Right, right. You know what's funny is we did our praying in the new year episode where like it was like a half hour where we were just praying over different things. And I was listening to it and I found that by the, and I don't want to make you self-conscious because we'll probably do the same episode again in a month. <laughs> it, um, 
by the time we got like halfway through it, like we started off so strong and focused. <laughs> and by the time we got to the end, like we're both, um, um, and just. <laughs> yeah, I Who totally, cares? I, I don't yeah. think I've ever re-listened to that one just uh-huh. for that reason, because yeah. I, that's the way I felt at the end of it. I was like, wow. You know, you know what? It, it is mentally tiring to pray yeah. for a sustained amount of time. And we were praying for heavy topics. It wasn't just, you know, whatever popped into our head. Right. And so. Hey, yeah, we get tired when we pray. That's okay. So, so heads up when you're listening to our praying in the new year episode for 2020. <laughs> we're going to start really, really strong. And by the end, we're going to be, and God just, um, just, um, just, um, and dear Lord and dear Lord and father yeah. God, and father God, and you guys yeah. are not going to judge us and you're going to pray <laughs> right along with us and get a lot out of it. Amen. All right. Well, thank you to Lisa for this question. And I hope that this did address some of it and, and make you maybe feel, if anything, I, I hope a takeaway for you and anybody listening is to just don't stress out too much about it. And I think if we are going to f- have a fault in praying, I would so much rather my fault be that I said the same thing too many times than I got mm-hmm. so self-conscious that I didn't say things at all, you know? Mm-hmm. So maybe that can be a takeaway and just do what feels natural. And it's just, it's between you and God. Kind of like when Jamie and I talk and I say, you know, and she says, um, who cares? <laughs> you know? Um. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's jump into our prayers for the unsaved. You for know? those of you... <laughs> For those of you that don't know, our prayers for the unsaved are a time where we just take a little bit of time to pray for the one to three people that God has placed on our hearts to pray for, for the long haul, just until God releases us from that prayer burden that we're going to be faithful to pray for these people every time. And we do this on all of our coffee breaks. And if you enjoy these, they are, we talked about it earlier, but it's many different facets of praying the same prayer for the unsaved people in your life. Um, So today our prayer focuses on um, just persevering in prayer and having patience. And if you like these, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, and you can get one of these prayers delivered to your inbox daily for 30 days so that you have all of them and you don't have to wait for our coffee break episodes to pray. So let's pray. Father, I need your help to persevere in prayer. Sometimes it feels like I keep asking you to save my friend and nothing ever happens. Give me patience, Lord. You are not slow, but you are patient. You don't want my friend to perish, but to come to repentance. Please give me boldness in my prayers. Remind me that when I pray according to your will, you hear me. Remind me that my prayers for my friend's salvation are really making a difference, even when I feel like giving up. You are the God who saves. You've saved murderers and thieves. You saved me, the worst of sinners. So please save my friend as well and give me boldness to continue on in my prayers for their salvation. Amen. Amen. That actually was a good tie-in, you know, with persevering in prayer. Yeah, it was. Well, if you guys have questions that we can cover on a future Coffee Break episode, send this to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And again, we want to thank Lisa for submitting this and let's close with one more word of prayer for her and everybody else listening. God, we're just so thankful for all the ways that you have taken care of us. We're thankful for this podcast and our listeners and all the encouragement and support that you send us and just the practical and logistical things that you work out to help these episodes get aired. God, we thank you for Lisa and her question and pray that this podcast really would be an encouraging resource and that you would be building up a community of women who are growing in their prayer lives and making a difference for all eternity with our prayers. Amen. Amen.